If you experience mediocre or inconsistent results with AI, stay tuned because this video is for you. I will show you what I use and works every time. I will show you how to use a better alternative to the traditional you are an expert dot dot dot. Hi, I'm Anto. I'm a software engineer and despite my ADHD, I managed to build a successful career in software and in tech. I am documenting my journey to solopreneurship on this YouTube channel. So if you're interested in software engineering, solopreneurship, ADHD, stay tuned because that's what I talk about on this channel. So don't forget to subscribe. A good prompt is what really makes the difference between terrible results to a really great one. It's very easy to spend hours with AI and not get what you were hoping for. And especially like in my case, if you have ADHD, you can very easily start going down into a rabbit hole if you don't know what you're doing. And at the end of it, you will come out completely exhausted. So what you should do instead, instead of starting your prompt saying you are an expert in, I've been experimenting with a slightly different way of specifying the expertise and the, the persona. So what I've been doing is referencing a specific expert. For example, you can say you are Chris Voss, the author of Never Split the Difference. And by referencing their work, you are also gonna be very specific into the aspect that you want to cover because a single author during their career, they can change opinion, they can write different books about different topics. So it's very important that you clarify their work as well. And sometimes what I do, I use their book or if he's a YouTuber or someone else, I get their video, I extract the transcript and then I use that transcript as part of the prompt. So now here I have three examples that I use pretty much every day that I found extremely useful. So I have created these three prompts and you can find the link into the description if you want to download them. These three prompts are one for negotiating. So every time you want to negotiate something, it can be an email, it can be an offer, it can be a price or it can be you want to sell a product. I use this prompt. The second one is for setting career goals. If you want to set different objectives or if you want to define your goals in a measurable way. And the third one is to write technical documentation. So now I'll quickly show these three prompts. Again, you can download them and the link is down in the description. So the prompt number one is about negotiating and I'm structuring this prompt in the following way. I'm saying you are a negotiator expert applying crisp boss never split the difference techniques. Below is a relevant context from prior emails or conversation. And then at this point, you can insert the details. Using this information, then I have four bullet points. Craft a short, friendly and assertive response that aims to, and then you specify the goals that you want. That can be a request for an exception or a closing a sale or securing a discount, you name it. And then incorporate Chris Voss principles such as Empathy, labeling, calibrated questions. This is part of the book. If you never read the book, I really recommend it. So I can leave the, the link down in the description to the book, but it's super famous. So you can just Google it. And then three, keep the message concise and frictionless, ensuring it feels like a natural continuation of the existing conversation. So you don't want to just sound like you just read the book and you're applying everything, but you want to blend it in into the email conversation. So it's important that you can copy paste, for example, the content of the email if you want to negotiate on an email or content of a conversation can be anything. And with a clear call to action, or next steps. So this is one example. The other example is about the, the goals. I'm not going to read the entire thing because it's, it's quite long, but the, the ones for goals, for example, I'm referring to the book Measure What Matters by John Doer. And that book is about OKRs. If you're familiar with uh, goal settings, OKRs and KPIs are a standard nowadays and that book specifies how to define OKRs and how to define KPIs. So it has a placeholder where you can specify the topic or the focus area where you want to improve or what is your goal and then the output format will generate your objectives and then for each of them will generate a set of KPIs or performance indicators. This is also very very useful. I use it regularly and this always giving me very very good results. And then finally the last one is to write technical documentation. So in um, most of the time as software engineers we have to write technical documentation and I think that's one of the topics that is very hard to get it right. Most of the time you write documentation that is 
not very specific or is too specific, too technical. So in this way, I'm referencing another book that is the product is docs, writing technical documentation and product development group by Christopher Gales. And this book tells you how to write technical documentation and in a very structured way. And this, um, essentially the author, if I'm not mistaken, uh, was in the product team for Splunk. Splunk has a number of products. I think the most famous one is the to search logs. And I use this one to generate a consistent type of documentation. So if you use always the same prompt and only change the feature that you want to document and what is the target audience, you will end up with the very good results as well. But why this prompt works and why writing the prompts in this way is better than being a generic expert? I think it is because it avoids inconsistencies in the answer. Sometimes there are multiple experts in a specific field and these experts can have diverging opinions. In that case, I think we can just confuse the AI by saying you are an expert in this field because there are two different school of thoughts and who knows, the AI can one day pick up one school of thoughts and the other day change and pick up the other one. So I think being clear and specific, that's very important for, for the AI. The other thing is because by referencing a specific expert, you are automatically building the persona because the LLM will already have all the information about that specific author, for example. And by referencing their work, you can also give the angle that you want to take. And that's another thing. So you're going to use AI to mirror the best expert, not to mirror a generic expert. So that's, I think this is the reason why it works. I hope this short video is going to help you. And uh, let me know down in the comments if you have questions or tips or what is your best prompt if you have better ideas or a different experience just let us know uh, we're gonna read your comments and if you have any idea for next videos also let me know down in the comments in the meantime i'll thank you don't forget to subscribe and ciao